Hello, welcome to the Careers in Finance webinar for students on the Masters in Law and Finance programme. I'm Claire, the Events, Careers and Alumni Officer for the MLF programme. I work closely with the Careers Advisors at both the Said Business School and at the University's Career Service to provide support as you transition to the next stage of your career. I'd like to introduce Polly Metcalf, one of the excellent team of Careers Advisors at the Career Service. Polly's an economics graduate from the University of Bath with practical experience in the finance sector. She worked at JP Morgan for five years where she spent time in emerging markets, credit hybrids and later in graduate development. Polly will talk about recruitment dates and timings for financial institutions. She'll talk about the types of roles that are available at entry level and how to prepare your CVs for these applications. After that, after Polly has spoken, there'll be time for questions. So any questions, put in the Q&A section and you can also talk amongst yourselves in the chat section. So I'm going to hand you over to Polly now. Hi and welcome. So as Claire said, I um, look after finance and banking for the um, Oxford University Career Service. I'm just going to run through a couple of things. I thought it might be quite useful initially to talk a little bit, um, as this is mainly for entry level positions, for, to talk a little bit about the overview of the sort of roles that are available and then talk a little bit more about the recruitment time frame within that. And then a little bit we'll touch on what you can be doing now and then what you can be doing when you arrive at Oxford in order to make yourself as employable as possible. Okay, so um, some of this stuff you'll probably already know, but let's run over very briefly the um, types of organisations that you may be thinking about going into. So I've broken this down into um, investment banking and then other um, entry level finance roles. So the structure of an investment bank, as you're probably aware, has got the front office, the middle office and the back office. And I'm going to really focus on the front office because that is the the roles that the majority of students are um, that come to see us are more interested in. So within that, that's broken down to corporate finance. So those are is also known as the sort of IBD, investment banking division. And within that, you might be looking at things like mergers and acquisitions or equity or debt restructuring. Also um, within investment banking, there are then the markets roles. So these are um, things within research, sales and trading. Um, within the investment bank. So um, those are the sort of typical roles within the um, front office investment bank that um, students tend to go into. But outside of that, um, they also consider going into what are called buy side roles. So that is roles within institutional investors. So they might go into private equity, they might go into asset management, hedge funds, things like that. There are, um, and typically, the recruitment for these are fairly similar. Um, and then outside, those, uh, outside of those, there are then things in, for example, smaller boutique investment banks, there's roles within regulation, so within the FSA, Bank of England, and the Prudential Regulation Authority. Um, there are roles within physical trading firms, so organisations like Glencore and Vittel. Um, and then also there's lots of roles within accountancy and actuarial firms as well. And those are both within the large big four that a lot of our graduates go to, but also within some of the smaller um, accountancy firms and regional accountancy firms. So typically um, the recruitment timeframes for large organisations are fairly similar. And this is something, um, this is the reason that we hosted this webinar now, because the recruitment timeframes are actually fairly aggressive in that they will be starting fairly soon for some of these organisations. So what typically happens is the larger the organisation, the more structured and organised they tend to be with their recruitment process. So if you imagine um, one of the big four, for example, or one of the major investment banks, if they're bringing in lots and lots of graduates, they need to do that quite far in advance in order to make sure that they're meeting business demand. And where it comes to entry level roles, that tends to be, um, they open around summer and they close by um, October, November time, depending on the organisation. And what tends to happen as well is that there is rolling recruitment. And rolling recruitment means that as and when they see people that meet the entry criteria to their graduate programmes, they will start to assess them. So start bringing them through interviews and assessment centres and online assessment. And then they, so it might be that if you wait until the end towards October, November to apply for some of these, if they're still open, actually the majority of the positions are already filled. 
So the first piece of major advice is if you are thinking about some of these entry level roles within some of these finance organisations is apply early. And that does mean that it's unlikely you would have done anything sig significant on your course. You may have had some introductory lectures, you may even have started the course if you apply slightly later, um, but it would it, be more about approaching um, Oxford rather than actually um, applying from here. So that's something that may come up in the questions after and we can talk about how you can, um, how you can put that on your CV. Um, there are other roles. So if, for example, you were thinking about going into a smaller organisation or you had a significant level of experience already that meant you were going into a role that was not the entry level graduate role but perhaps an associate level position which would be the one above those positions then the time frames may be slightly different they will recruit perhaps more on an ad hoc basis and be looking at very specific skills rather than that core set of skills that they'd be looking for on graduate entry okay um so as I mentioned, the large organisations are very structured, and that is regardless of which division you're applying for. So if, for example, you were thinking, um, if you look at a bulge bracket um, bank, so someone like JP Morgan, they're going to have a JP Morgan investment banking division, they're going to have markets, they're going to have JP Morgan asset management, and they're going to have middle office, all of those functions, legal compliance and everything, that are likely to have a similar, um, t similar time frame. Globally, they tend to react in the same way. And again, we can talk a little bit more about global recruitment if it comes up into the questions, because the timeframes may be slightly later. Um, and especially if you are thinking about applying to North America, there are some um, very specific things there that we, we could discuss. But generally, they recruit in a, um, in a similar way, and that will all be fairly early. So regardless of where you're thinking of working globally, um, it's definitely still worthwhile to think about it early. Um, as I say, smaller boutique firms um, tend to be slightly um, less restrictive. However, depending on the area you're looking at, you may be more competitive or less competitive depending on your experience. So for example, um, if you're thinking about applying for a hedge fund, it's very likely that they take, um, whilst there are a couple of larger hedge funds that do take graduates, the majority will take people that, for example, have um, some investment banking experience or some corporate finance experience, something like that. Um, but there are some opportunities for graduates um, which you can which you can look at. Um, okay, so that ten that is typically the recruitment time frame and the um, uh, and the sort of organisations you might be looking at. In terms of the process for applications. The part that really needs to be done early is the actual online application. For the majority of these firms, it will be either an application form or a CV and cover letter. So these are the sort of things that you can be thinking about preparing now, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, after an online application, what's very common is for there to be some sort of online testing. So that might be in the form of a numerical test or um, some verbal reasoning and those sort of those sort of online tests that happen through major providers usually people like SHL um, but also there may be individually written ones for specific banks. Quite often what happens with um, online assessments is they have a absolute cutoff. So rather than looking at their online assessments together with all the rest of the recruitment material, um, what they typically will do is if you don't pass a benchmark, you will be out of the process. So they use that as a, a real method of screening um, and then they will combine that with a CV and, um, and cover letter screening and invite people to the next round, which is typically um, a phone interview or increasingly a video interview where, for example, they will record a series of questions and you will um, just respond to them um, online and post back the video. After that stage, if you're successful up to there, you'll most likely be invited to an assessment centre. An assessment centre will be made up of a series of perhaps case studies, interviews, group exercises, maybe some additional testing um, if, that is, if that's applicable. For some organisations, that might be slightly different. So, for example, if you were looking at a proprietary trading firm, they're much, much more interested in the one-to-one -one interviews. So rather than having all those series before, it's more likely that you will go straight in to interviews and have a longer series, maybe three or four interviews, with more and more senior people through all the organisation. Um, and then after that, you'll be made an offer. 
and those tend to be coming round. We do see students getting offers as early as Christmas, some of them coming in a little bit later um, throughout the year. So bear in mind you'll still be quite early in your studies, so that's quite nice. You can invest the rest of your, um, your, your year here to your academic course. Um, okay, so that's a bit about the recruitment process. I want to touch on a little bit around what you can be doing now. Um, thinking a little bit more about self-reflection. So have you got some experience in the past? Have you, what have you enjoyed about that experience? What haven't you enjoyed so much? What's made you apply to this course? Have you got any um, real insight as to whether you would rather be working for one of those large global organisations, a small and more boutique organisation? Have you got a strong feel for where particularly it is within finance that you want to be? Because then you can add that to the next part, which is going to be your research. So it's really, really important to start thinking about what sort of roles you want to be applying for now. Because as I've alluded to, the time can run away quite quickly. And if you wait till you get here before you start thinking about this, um, there's a lot to fit in before you're going to be making applications. So it's really, really best to start doing the research now to start seeing if there are particular areas that you might want to go on to. If you go onto our website, you can find more information and resources there in terms of how to go about researching this. We've got all sorts of briefings and I can rerun through these again at the end and I'm sure Claire can send them on to you afterwards. But one of the, um, a great one is on the Goldman Sachs website. You can do a bit of a questionnaire um, and it will talk to you about, depending on your answers to that questionnaire, what different areas of the bank might suit you best. So if you're thinking about investment banking, that's quite a nice tool to look at, but also looking at the different, um, the different sort of overviews and publications that um, there also are to give you a better feeling of what area might be best suited to you and your experience. And then finally, you can be thinking about preparing your CV. Um, and thinking about your experience and how you might market that to an investment bank. So um, I've got a couple of top tips which I'm going to whiz through from, from, um, for sort of CVs for investment banking. Um, so one page for this sector is, is really important. The only sort of caveats to that might be if, for example, you have got um, a research background and you are going into maybe a quant research position where they'd be typically looking for your, um, for your research publications and things like that, in which case it might be longer. But apart from that, the rule is generally to stick to one page. You want to keep the format as simple and straightforward as possible. So the key message there is stand out for the right reasons, the content of your CV rather than some, you know, particularly jazzy format. Um, the other thing to really think about is putting yourself into the shoes of the recruiter. So it's likely that your CV is going to be in a pile of hundreds of CVs that they're receiving. So you really want to make sure that you're selling yourself in a really clear, concise manner and you have really linked yourself to the role that they're looking for. So think about making the job easy for them. It's very likely that your CV, especially within large organisations, will be initially screened by someone in HR or possibly even outsourced, which means you want to be really, really careful about matching those criteria off, um, you know, very accurately. Be really careful there to know the competencies that the firm are particularly hiring for because that's what you want to be talking about on your CV. So if, for example, they've, they are talking about the ability to um, strategically solve problems or lead or manage, you want to be talking about on your CV the times that you have managed, led, organised um, so that they can really clearly see that you have developed that skill. It's all about showing them you've developed that skill rather than telling them you have it. So really evidence where you've got um, where, where you have got evidence to put that in there. Um, some firms will have a real focus on competencies, whereas others may be using strength-based recruitment and others may be looking for much more technical skills. Um, so it's really important, as I say, to do your research at this stage and find out how you're, the firm that you're looking to recruits and what sort of things they're going to be looking for in their CV because you want to be tailoring your CV as much as possible to that organisation. Um, and then just a couple of housekeeping things at the end, no photos, dates of birth, nor marital status, personal information, things like that. Um, that's not common on a UK CV. 
Okay, so those are a couple of things that you can be doing now, and I will um, quickly run through some things that I think will be useful for you to know about to prepare um, for when you actually arrive in Oxford. So we have lots of events, and the first one that's going to be happening in first week, so um, fairly shortly after you've arrived, is banking and investment, everything you need to know. So this is a panel event, a big event that looks, sort of launches the, the term for us. And that will give an overview of what, really what investment banking is and a case study to go with that, what investment um, management is and a case study to go with that, and then a really nice panel. So a mixture of organisations that you can meet. Um, we have the finance fair, so this is a booklet from last year, um, and we'll have another one of those in second week. We have a whole series of fairs, um, starting with the Oxford Careers Fair but, um, and the Management Consultancy Fair and law fair and all that sort of thing but the finance fair is in second week and there'll be a huge range of organizations from across the whole area of finance there so really important to get in early and start meeting the um, employees that you want to talk to we will be running an insight to business program which i thought might be um it might be relevant that will be three workshops during term and that gives all of the insight to the commercial awareness side that they're all going to be looking for um, we also will be hosting a huge number of employer events in Oxford as well. You can pretty much go out two or three times an evening um, during Michaelmas term where you will meet organisations over drinks, canapes, maybe dinner, there might be specific um, groups of people that they invite for smaller chats, but generally they will give an overview of their organisation, they'll allow you to network with people and they'll give real insight to your um, the recruitment process. So again, important to kind of know who you're targeting before that term starts. Um, we have a programme called Springboard. So for females that is um, happens in ninth week and that is all about personal development for um, women. We have commercial awareness sessions. We run a whole host of sessions on, for example, CVs, application forms, cover letters and things like that. You can do some practice online tests with the Bloomberg assessment test, which we host at, career, at the um, IT services. We do um, mock assessment centres, mock interviews, all that sort of thing. So really, really important to engage with the career service. And that is just the um, Oxford Career Service, but you'll also have access to the SBS Career Service as well. Um, the other thing that I would suggest you do when you get here is to start to engage with societies. So Oxford has a really, really active society network. Um, within this space of finance, the Oxford Finance Society, the Guild, Capitox, Women in Business um, are all doing really great events and give you more opportunities to engage with employers and find out more about the sector. So definitely worthwhile um, going along and, and signing up to them. I mentioned slightly earlier that I would talk a little bit about resources. So, um, so just a couple that I think would be useful to pinpoint to you. So if you go on to the Career Service website, so that's, I'm not sure if you can see that there, but it's www.careers.ox.ac.uk. On there we have all sorts of information in the public domain. So everything you need to know about putting together your CV, um, your cover letter, application forms. Um, also there is um, a briefing on there which I think would be really useful for you to read and that's the banking inv and investment briefing. So if you go onto our main web page and you click in the options and occupations section and in there it gives you around the 50 um, top destinations by the number of students that go there and obviously banking and investment is one of those so you can download the briefing for that. Um, also I would suggest you take a look at um, some of the other resources on the website in terms of things like the psychometric testing, online testing um, that you may need to be aware of. There are also some good links on the bottom of that briefing to places you might want to go to find out more about different areas within the sector. When you get here, there are also lots of hard copy resources within the Career Centre, but also websites that you can probably access, things like Inside Careers, The Vault, Ask Ivy, things like that. So lots of information out there, and I think that's where the key message is, start digesting some of that stuff now um, before arriving here. Okay, I think that's it for um, what I wanted to run through, but hopefully now we've got some questions that have come through that we can talk about individually. Thank you, Polly. We're waiting for some questions to come in. If you've got some questions, please post them and I will read them out to Polly for you. Nothing yet. No? Nobody has any questions? 
Okay, well, you could always email them to me if you do, and we can pass them on to Polly. Um, and when you come here, you'll be able to meet Polly in person as well. So thank you very much for taking part, and we look forward to seeing you in a few months' time. Hi, I've just come back. There is one question, um, and it says, I'm a non-European citizen um, from India. I'm looking to work in the UK or the EU. What's the probability of UK or EU organisations selecting me at entry level? So that's a really important question. Yeah. So it's almost an impossible question to answer as well, um, unfortunately. So if you ask any of these organisations about this, um, it's very difficult to get a clear number um, in terms of what the probability is. They might be able to give you an indication from um, how many people they have hired in the last um, year or so through this way. There are allowances, um, so large organisations will be given a visa allowance that they can use um, and that usually has to be um, sort of allocated across the organisation. So the real question is how can they prove that you, so for the, the rules for example in the EU, how can they prove that um, you are a better candidate than anyone else within the EU to take that role? Um, so it does depend a little bit on how much experience you're bringing um, to the organisation, if you've got a specific background um, and what level you're going to be going in. It does happen. Um, you can research the organisations that tend to take more students and there is an allowance, but um, it does depend also on the pool of candidates that are there that they're taking from within the EU as well. So I'm sorry it's not a particularly definitive answer um, and there are things to talk about. You can of course come and talk to the visa office here at Oxford as well when you arrive um, and also um, engage with the organisations early because the more um, steps there are in that process the better it is to be earlier on as well because you don't want them to have used up their visa allocation for example by the time they come round to, um, to interviewing you. Okay we have a couple more questions so that's good. Um, we've got uh, what is entry level analyst pay approximately? Um, approximately, it does depend again by the organisation. Um, so, and also within the type of role that you're going for, but you're probably looking around the between 35 and 45 um, region. Okay. Um, and we've got another one that says if I'm coming from a legal background, how do I tailor my CV to appear relevant for a finance career? Yeah. Okay. So That's this is, question. yeah, this is a great question. So um, this is all about doing the research to find out about the organisations you're hiring. So what you really, really want to be tailoring it on is those competencies. So where you, for example, they're going to be looking a lot about the um, communication, the commerciality, all of those things that you would have built up as a lawyer. So how can you demonstrate through how you have worked with your clients that you can communicate um, with people and how you will be able to apply that to other um, clients as well? It will depend a little bit on the area of finance you're looking to go into as to what those specific competencies are. Um, but whereas at the moment you've probably got your CV ordered in terms of legal experience, and then things like that. You might want to, for example, talk about commercial experience or you might want to talk about specific deals which are more relevant. And again, as I say, really, really pull out the key skills that they're looking for and make it really easy for them to cross-reference your experience to what they're looking for in terms of the competencies. So taking out some of the um, particularly um, legal jargon. So for example, they may well not recognise um, some of the um, particular law firms that you've been working for and things like that. So bringing out maybe the commerciality of the deals rather than the um, names that you're working with and think about how you've developed the transferable skills like communication and leadership, the ability to um, work on your own, the problem solving and things like that because they're all going to be really, really relevant across the two. And then the other thing you want to be thinking about is elsewhere in your application, how you can really, really demonstrate your motivation for that sector. So are you putting in your cover letter a really convincing story about what's brought you around to this way of thinking? You can pull on some of the modules that you're going to be um, looking at in your masters. And also you can think about, as I say, joining societies and, um, and things like that that can demonstrate the motivation as well. Okay, we have a few more questions. Um, there's two very similar ones. Um, can I contact organisations right now stating that I'm going to be joining the course in September and somebody else said, can I put Oxford on my CV? Yeah, okay. So, um, absolutely, you can contact organisations. Um, so, 
In terms of putting Oxford on your CV, what I would always do is just put the future dates. So put from October 2015 to um, whatever it would be, June 2016, and then put the MLF course. You might want to, for example, list a couple of modules that you might think are going to be particularly relevant. Um, and you can say in your cover letter that you're very much looking forward to you know, starting the course in Oxford. Um, in terms of contacting employers, absolutely. If you have the opportunity to see um, employers, if, for example, you have um careers fairs wherever you are the local university so for example here at oxford we allow um other um oxford universities to come in so it might be your undergraduate university or it might be a local university would allow you to go along to their careers fairs or there are lots of organizations that host big city careers fairs over the summer um you can go and definitely engage with employers that way also think about if there are alumni networks that you can access to um to get in touch with people and and talk to them and firms that you're interested in. Okay, um, we've got another question about a foreign student's positioned in relation to locals in terms of careers at entry level. I think that sort of goes back to the visa question, doesn't it? Yes, um, I'm not sure there's much more to add there. As I say, if you can demonstrate that you're bringing something unique to the position or you've got a unique level of experience or combination of things, um, then they, it completely depends on the organisation and their stance on it. But if you're a competitive candidate, you're a competitive candidate. The other thing to, um, to note is that for quite a lot of organisations, um, it does depend a little bit, but um, some will allow you to apply for multiple locations. So it's always worthwhile thinking about, is your priority working in that region or is your priority working for that firm in that area? Um, because if you do have the option, if it's the, um, if it's the latter and you have the option to apply to multiple locations, you might consider applying to a location where you have got the um, right to work already um, to sort of increase your chances. Um, there's a question here that relates to something you said earlier, Polly, about um, international jobs. Um, so do the banks offer jobs for other financial centres like New York, Singapore, Hong Kong, and how do yeah. you apply for those? So in terms of the global recruitment, there are some that will allow you to apply for multiple locations, um, but others that won't. And if you're not allowed to apply for multiple locations and you have a particular burning desire to work in another region, then you need to be very engaged. So if, for example, you were thinking about working in North America, um, working in North America, any of you that are already undergraduates in North America will appreciate that the system works in a way where it's a very, very heavy campus recruitment. So rather than here, where you can, basically anyone can apply for a role, they go up onto the website, whatever university you're from, you can apply to those roles. Whilst they might come and engage more with certain universities, of which Oxford is, is quite often one of them, um, you can apply from any other institution. However, in the US the system tends to be slightly different and it's much more about particular schools that they work with and they will come in, they'll do their presentation, they'll then run their, um, their interviews there and then on campus. So it means that if you're outside one of those target schools, which you will be if you're applying from Oxford, you need to be really, really engaged and engage very early. So what that means is you want to be thinking now about identifying who the recruiter is to talk to. So either trying to find that contact through the London office or from um, uh, any you know um, alumni from that university or a network that you might have um, at an undergraduate university in the US that is targeted by that organization because that will really demonstrate that you are a very tenacious person that you go out of your way you're really motivated for this organization and it means that you'll still be within the time frame to apply okay there's a few more questions thank you very much for sending those through um, one of them what sort of typical roles are there in the finance world which suit graduates with a legal background? So I kind of talked a little bit about how the employability skills are key. So I think the really important thing here is to see where you will best fit. Um, because you're much more likely to enjoy your career there and get through the, you know, the, the process well. Um, however, having said that, there are particular roles that do, for example, 
relate. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to work within legal, in legal counsel within um, one of these banking organisations. So, say, for example, you really, really wanted to work for a large investment bank, but actually you did quite enjoy the law and you've enjoyed the law that you've been doing. Actually, a legal in-house role um, could work really quite nicely for you. Obviously, compliance roles have the elements of due diligence and the um, contracting and things like that that you may be used to. And then there are, of course, the regulation roles that um, may be applicable as well. But I would take a real think about what skills you've developed as a lawyer that you want to use and which skills perhaps are um, think, making you think about moving away from the law that you might want to develop in other areas as well. Okay gosh loads of questions coming in now. Um, I would just answer a few of the questions about career services that are available. So um, Polly is based at the career service um, in, on Banbury Road where there are how many? Ten yep. other careers advisors. There's also the career service at the Side Business School. Um, both offer one-to-one -one appointments, individual appointments that you can have when you're here, and both offer um, events, um, CV checking, covering letters, mock interviews, I mean there's a raft of, of services available to you. Um, and, and then I'm also available um, for the MLF programme. Um, I'm not a specialist, but I can help with CVs, covering letters, um, and with a little bit of preparation for interviews. So all of that is available to you when you get here. Um, somebody asked a question about checking CVs before you arrive. It's probably not relevant until you're actually applying for a position, a specific position, so that you know that you can match your CV to that position. As Polly was saying earlier, you need to pick out the competencies and the skills required for a particular role before you um, create your CV and then um, let us look at it. Um, and somebody else asked about condensing a CV. Again, as Polly was saying, if you've got a lot of transactions or a lot of experience, what you're trying to do is condense that down really to pinpoint everything that's on the competencies for the particular role that you're applying for. So it's really about tailoring your CV to meet the employer's requirements. And again, that's something that you'll get help with when you're here. Um, and there are loads of workshops on CVs and covering yeah. letters, um, but they're both SBS and the career service run, so you won't, you won't be short of, of um, places to go for advice. Um, and then just a question about the, the names of the employers that come to Oxford. I mean, there's yeah. a huge amount of, of employers, but I'm sure Polly can give you a, a quick list. Yeah, I think the easiest thing to do, and the, bearing in mind that this is not a definitive list, it is no more than the employers that come to Oxford. So there is no list of who you should apply for. It's much more down to your own research, your own fit, what sort of um, clients and work that the particular organisation is working on. However, having said that, you can download the FAIR booklets from our website. So they are again on www.careers.oxford.ac.uk. Um, and if you go into our services and you go into FAIRs, there you can see the FAIR booklets from last year. And in there, there is a list of all the organisations that come to Oxford and within there it gives a really nice um, sort of blurb about the organisation, what sort of roles are available, whether there's work experience, internships, what they do for positive action initiatives and things like that, also when their deadlines are which would be really useful for you and quite often which may be really useful they have the contact details of the recruiter. Um, bear in mind that these are from last October but um, the majority of them the, the telephone number if, if not the contact will still be applicable um, so really nice nice way of engaging with employers early. Uh, there's a nice question about whether there are employers in Oxford itself, if that was somewhere you wanted to, that, that you would like to live, or most in London, I think they're most in yeah. London. Um, the vast majority of the large global banks are based there um, in London, however we do always run an OX postcode fair. Um, which has got all the Oxford employers. There are great organisations like Oxford Asset Management and some individual um, prop trading firms and things like that that are based here. It's a real hub for research. So yes, there are some really interesting organisations. Also from the other side, when we talked a little bit about accountancy and actuarial firms, they are both based absolutely nationally, so whichever town you want to work at. We also have on our website um, some information about working in the Oxfordshire area, so you might want to download that and take a look if you were thinking about staying in Oxford. Okay, were there any more questions? I think I've been through all of them now. Um, please type very quickly if you want to ask, <laughs> ask another question. No, okay. I think that's it. So we'll close again. <laughs> Anything else you have questions about, you can always just contact me anyway. I think you've all got my email address by now or post them on the Facebook page um, and we will try and help you that way. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.